So what, do you, what are what are basic, what do you do? <laughs> so so what do I do? Watch this space. GlynnisGermanCelebrant.com. <laughs> it's a publicity break. I'm a celebrant. And what does a celebrant do? A celebrant is there for ceremony. So all of life's wonderful moments, why not mark those with ceremony? So we do that already with, um, with religions. You know, we acknowledge the birth of a baby and the naming of a baby. We get married. Uh, you know, we can, at any point in life, we can have a ceremony. Why not, you know? Um, but generally people recognize ceremony and its uses around about birth and marriage and death. However, when it comes to these moments in people's lives, if they have no experience of how to celebrate that, then they don't have any idea. So they look to somebody like me for guidance. And there's a lot of celebrants who will say, oh, it's, it's, it's not about us, but I, don't agree with that because if people come to me they're coming to me for guidance so I take my celebrant role very seriously as as an opportunity to guide people especially if they are in a moment that is catching them at a vulnerable moment which is around death so if they come to me for a funeral um, they really do need a lot of guidance. But even weddings, they need guidance because they've never got married before. And I always tell my couples, if I marry you, that's it. It's a one-time opportunity. There's no divorce on my watch, <laughs> you know. It was What are right. you up to now? Cleaning. What am I wait, up wait, to? Wait, wait. Yeah. Okay. All right. Is it all <laughs> in there. Okay. okay. So what am I up to now? Watch this space. Festival Dando Vida a la Muerte. Giving Life to Death Festival. Dan, dan, dan. Spanish. So, yep. It's, um, it's basically the first festival surrounding the topic of death and dying in Spain. Mm -hmm. The idea is that during the week there'll be a series of activities, death cafes, grief cafes, visits to crematoria, um, visits to graveyards, conferences, cinema nights with the directors talking, so films obviously around dying and death, um, a fair. Why? Because here in, in the world today, one of the changes that's very important is to normalise the talking around dying and death because it's the one guarantee and if we don't talk about it then we don't um it's not to say we need to talk about it all the time no we just need to be aware that it's a difficult conversation because nobody wants to die hey why not if we're having fun then why would we want to leave the fun but we're all going to die and if you are ill then and nobody around you wants to talk about death and you're accepting that you're probably going to die sooner rather than later. It's a very lonely and frustrating place to be on your own with nobody to talk to. So my job as a celebrant is to, is to guide people in a moment of their lives where really they don't know what they're doing. And especially we've taken away God from society when we took out any talk about religion. So we live in a modern day society where people don't have um, any idea of rituals, so they come to me with less information, you know. But my personal beliefs are not what I'm giving them. I am just inspiring them with who I am because I work with the universal spiritual values. We all understand what it is to love and be loved. We all know what it feels like to be respected. You know, those values just are wonderful. Because um, when they're not there, we know what it feels like is not nice. So I use values for the basis of my work. When I do the funerals, which we prefer to call celebration of life because the, the death has happened and this is to look back on the life, okay. which, you know, we've got to do yeah. because somebody lived and now they're not there in a physical 
place anymore, but they're definitely there in your heart. And why not celebrate their achievements, their personality, their qualities, and just bring them back for a little while at the moment of death, just to, to say goodbye. But say goodbye to the person who lived, not be stuck in that moment. So, so because as a celebrant, that's where I reach people when death has happened, I see a lot of suffering, especially if there was never any preparation so that's why I'm interested in being an end of life doula because and a death cafe facilitator because I really do believe that um, to enjoy life to the full you have to be talking about death. <laughs> so you're connected with joy and sadness yeah and and living every day in the middle of it in a way well what do you some people really like to choose it's a choice where do you want to live? I personally want to live in happiness. If I have a day that is a day that challenges the sort of shadow side, well, I might just allow it its space, okay, because I've, I'm, I'm 58. I have been through my 20s, which was all about shoving it down. You know, it doesn't exist. And yes, it does, you know. So, so if I have a, a challenging day where... The, the negative is, is sort of trying to get there. I do try, and this is what I say to, to people who come to me for funerals, I say, be gentle with yourself, because it's a process. Yeah. It's called life. Mm -hmm. That when I became a celebrant, which was in my mid forties, I'd never heard of the word before. Mm -hmm. I had this, oh my gosh, I was born to do this. <laughs> it took amazing. me decades of doing everything else yeah. of going really down to because um, when I got divorced in my 40s that was my life trauma where everything was questioned who was I that was before you became a celebrity. yes yes so it all it was all meant to happen and it's the biggest gift so I thank my ex <laughs> for 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 being yeah. brave for splitting up I thank all exes yeah <laughs> yeah no I and, and it does annoy me sometimes <laughs> but I do love him um <laughs> But, you know, that was a whole journey and it was the best thing that ever happened to me to wake me up to my purpose in life. And what about, what is your advice, let's say, to celebrate not weddings or funerals, but celebrate, for example, the end of a project with your team? Yeah, the, oh, that's great. I don't know, a happy birthday in the office. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> some... Even if I do a Zoom meeting, I'd put a bit of ceremony in it, you uh -huh. know? Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. When I do, um, because we're a team of 12 and we're putting this festival together, so I create the space by, by creating ceremony before we start. And I talk about, let's take a moment, let's just come into this space, let's leave behind out there, and um, let's recognize the reason we're here today is to work in cooperation with love with generosity with respect and in peace something like that and um and lots of laughter and creativity and then we start the meeting because it's important mm -hmm. to to yeah. to to have a beginning middle and an end for everything mm -hmm. and um <laughs> sometimes people just kind of show up and then they're gone and you're just like well what happened where <laughs> did it start yeah, yeah, oh it's yeah. finished where and i think Every meeting should start with, and that's what we used to do. They called it prayer. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. know, it was talk. It was, call, yeah. it was going silent. It was mm. going within, and it was was cultivating something good. You know, um, for some people, it's hard to connect to the heart. Oh, uh. but it's no wonderful <laughs> challenge to invite them. Do you know yeah. why? Because people don't get invited enough. Oh, yes. Yeah. I, I used to have a team in which I, I did can, agile ceremonies. I don't know if you've heard of it. Agile is a methodology of working. Oh. And we, have cer we call it ceremonies. Oh. We actually don't have meetings. We have ceremonies in which we, for example, we have a retrospective ceremony in which you evaluate how it was the last spring. So the last two weeks I evaluated. And I just put it in the calendar and had my team kind of obliged to do this looking back and see what has gone right, what has gone wrong, da 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 da. You're a <laughs> celebrant. And, and I, for me, it was the best part of the week. Yeah. To have this moment to listen and just let 
yeah, let everyone say what they are they proud of, what have they learned, what went not so good, and what yeah. would they change if they yeah. would do it again. And I think that that was the only way to make a team. That's brilliant. Um, so it's a methodology, it's yeah. written. And I just said, well, I would just use it. Yeah. I don't have to do anything else, just to set, set something in the yeah. agenda and say, this is the agenda. Yeah. And you have to talk about it. That's wonderful. And someone told me, you know, I've never do this in my real life. I would never do this with my family. I, I mean, we're not like this. But as you oblige me to, I have to talk about it. Then I, I do it. Then excellent. I do it. And, and then she liked it. Yes, <laughs> excellent. So I, I, I do agree that sometimes it's just setting the space for yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. That makes you more comfortable yes. with time. At the very beginning, you are probably, I don't know what to say, and nothing comes to your mind. But then afterwards, yeah. you can see that... Hey, I enjoy the process. Exactly. It's going there. <laughs> yeah. And some people, they might not come back. But you know what? They might come back one day. And, um, and you've yeah. created that invitation to people to get in touch with themselves. It's really scary to get in touch with yourself, warts and all. Ah, yeah. You know, people don't want to do that. And um, yeah, I mean, that's okay. We have been talking about, let's say, personal environments. Weddings, yeah. funerals, yeah. uh, parties and celebrations. Uh, what about, uh, that's why I said the office for me yeah. and, and work and corporate work in which yeah. I've been involved for many years is like the emotions are not so welcomed yeah. because they are looked at as um, uh, weird. Inser yeah. <laughs> <laughs> weird. Why would you get emotional at work? Yeah. But hey, we spent such, I mean, yeah. such amount of time at work. Why not bring in my emotions at work? Exactly. It doesn't mean I break out, uh, I mean, yeah. uh, I break into tears every day. Yeah. But if I like what I'm doing, and I express joy. Seems for peop some people in the office the other day say, you're always happy. Why are you always happy? <laughs> and I'm like, well, I like this job. Uh, yeah. Why I shouldn't? Yeah, that's brilliant. Right? Because that's got to be the first step, hasn't it? Liking the job. Yeah. Because, um, Oh, how many people are just not happy mm -hmm. in their in their lives? And then yeah. they go to work and they take that misery with them to their job. Um, I, I, I hope my sons understand where I'm coming from when I say, don't work for the money, work because you love it. It's very easy to, to not be happy um, because to be happy, takes a conscious decision you know it's very easy to just wake up every day and be miserable <laughs> for me to wake up every day it involves the first thoughts are being grateful those are my first thoughts i you know i i have these conversations with god people do meditation they do it really well i don't i'm just a bad meditator so i just chat you know and yeah and I just say thank you for that night it was a really the fact that I had this roof over my head the fact that this mattress was comfortable the fact that I had a fan that worked so I wasn't horribly sweaty um and that my family's safe and that this world you know is full of opportunity for all of us and um if I can with what I could do to to just sort of take somebody in and support them to, towards happiness. I will do that till the end of my life. Yeah. How we call it? Uh, the Festival Dando Vida a la Muerte. Dando Vida a la Muerte. And in English, giving life to death because death matters. Death matters. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Thank you very much. Though. Yeah, thank you. This has been thank great. You. Thank you. <laughs> and um, the conversation. and if you if you are have been listening and you didn't turn off, and you are in a place of of grieving, don't be alone. If if you can surround yourself with positive people, please do. And if you need somebody to talk to, wherever you are in the world, what COVID gave us 
was a response to grieving and there are professionals and teams all over the world there to help and listen to you so good luck we're not good. alone yeah no we're not <laughs> yeah